So hi everyone, um, welcome to the last part of this tutorial. And uh, this was the tutorial, uh, just a reminder, this tutorial is all about tomato disease classification using deep learning. And uh, we've used TensorFlow as the framework. And uh, we'll be classifying uh, tomato leaves, those that we have that have bacterial spot disease, and tomato ye uh, yellow leaf cal virus, and those that are healthy. So we've gone through all the steps. We have uh, visualized, uh, grouped them, visualized uh, as numpies, as tensors, and as uh, uh, the norm the real images. And also we have used some for loop to iterate and see, uh, scan through the data set. And we have done a lot of things. Uh, so now like uh, we've already um, uh, uh, build our model as well as get the summary of our model and then use the model to predict uh, these uh, classes if it, uh, if it can get uh, a very accurate prediction. So we did that, we checked all that, the accuracies, we also checked the loss and so on. So, um, and also we, we checked uh, the prediction accuracies and we visualized it. So now after doing all that, uh, you'd be required to save uh, the version of this model because as, uh, as you're building models, sometimes it's, uh, you have to change some hyperparameters, like if you want to change uh, the optimizers, or you're changing some epochs, training epochs, and so on. So there are many things that you can change. So you sometimes you want to save uh, these versions of the model as you change stuff in the code. So you want to save the models. So this is how, how you're going to do it. So this tutorial is all about how you're going to save these versions of the models uh, that you change and in your code. Oh, okay. So. The first, uh, the first thing uh, you can do is you need to have a folder, and you need to have a folder in your system that acts, uh, that will save these versions. So in my case, I have this folder that is called Save Models. So let's uh, let me show you uh, how exactly this is done. So let me just share it. So for for the first thing that you know, for instance, our case we're in this folder. Uh, the whole class, uh, uh, you, depending on how, where you've uh, saved your your data set as well as the Jupyter notebook. So for our case, I'm in this folder, but I've, I want to save all my models in a folder that is called uh, saved models. So within this folder is when I'll save all the versions of the, of the ones uh, of the models. Like if I change something in the code and I want to save that version of the code and the results and everything, so this is where I'm going to save it. So I wanted you to check like, I'm in this folder, but I want to save something that is within this folder and here within this folder. So I have uh, my models and my training are in a different folder. And then I want and a subfolder of this GC lab folder. So I want to save my models within this folder. So let's go to the code and see how it's going to, uh, how we're doing it, we're doing that. So yeah, like I said, uh, now the Python code of uh, saving such models is that we're going to have a, uh, take a variable that is called model version. Let's say our versions are going to be called one, two, three, and so on. So let's say the first uh, version of our model, we call it one. So this is how you model to save then the specified folders and these two dots specifies because i said that we're in another in a different folder but you're going to save it in another folder so these two dots means that you're going to go back two steps so that you can save this version of the model so this is the code so if i run this it's going to create another folder with all the uh, the assets the metadata regarding this model into that folder and that folder is going to be a uh, subfolder within the save models folder is going to be called one. So that is all up. That is uh, how. So this is the output tells us there's going to be a folder. So let's go back and check what has been saved within that folder. So, yeah. So if I go to this save models folder and we have a folder that is called one. So this is. And within this folder, you have the variables, the metadata, and everything in this folder. 
So that's how you save your models. So you can also change um, if I want, uh, like if I go back to the code, like if I want this version maybe to be two. So if I change this version, then I run this code. So it will create another folder called uh, names two within that uh, saved, within this saved models folder. So that will correspond to the second version of this code. For instance, I've changed from the optimizer, I've changed something, or I've changed the epochs, I've changed many trainable parameters. So uh, if I change that and I want to document the results, that's how I'm going to. So here's the, the output. So if I go back again and check uh, in this folder, you see uh, another folder has been created with uh, different uh, subfolders within it. So this is how you, you can save your, your models versions. But again, okay, this is just like manually doing it. So if you want to save it um, automatically, like if you want, like if I'm doing some changes in the code, to be saved automatically, like uh, automatically in increment. Instead of writing one, two, three, four, five as the versions, you can have a code that automatically increments it. So what you're going to do is that uh, you can uh, you can go you can have a code like this. You have to import the OS model, and then like uh, like I said, uh, within the OS, it's going to list the directory. So it's this, uh, this part of the code will list the directories within that saved uh, folders, save models folder. So if it lists, it's going to be in a string. So you need to convert that string into an integer. So that uh, it becomes one, two, three. And then uh, it's going to check uh, the maximum. So if like for our case, we've already created one, two. So the next one will be three, four, five, and so on. So this is how it's going to increment. So if I run this, meaning that it is going to check how many folders are there, like you have one and two. So the next folder is going to be three and so on. So this is the code that will do that. So let me run it. So if you have changed something again in the code, just don't need to start doing it manually, but you can use this code to make it auto increment within that uh, folders where you save the versions of the model. So you see, this is the output. If I go check, uh, if I go back to our, to our case, so we have three folders now. So if I run the code, it's going to be four, it's going to be five and so on. So that's how you save different versions of your model when you're uh, working with the deep learning models. So most of the time competitions like within Cargo or Zindi or what require you to save your model. So if you have, you're training a lot of models, you can do this. You can save different versions of the model and uh, before submitting. So that's, that's one thing that you can do. Yeah, so, and you can also save the whole model. If you're, you've finished and you want to maybe use this model to predict something, and you have to save it so you can save these models. Like you can just say model.save. Let's say maybe this is three. If I just run this code, it's going to save uh, our model is going to be tomato, uh, tomato trees. So if I go back to my folder, I will have this model saved. So yeah, I can use it now, I can deploy it somewhere else. So this is how you save your models. So that's what I wanted, uh, like a conclusion, like, okay, after creating your models, building your models, checking the predictions, then you need to save it. So that's how you do it. So just like a recap, I just want us to go what we've covered so far. Uh, so we need to define, to import all the necessary models, uh, change your image size according to the, to what uh, the model accepts. So you can resize your model, you can do a lot of data argumentations and so on. If you have uh, an imbalanced data sets, you can do some data argumentations. You can view your data, visualize your data so that you know how your data looks like. So that if you're doing argumentations like cropping and 
and so on rescaling, you know how your data looks like. So this is a code, you use the for loop and the matplotlib to plot and just visualize your, your images in the data set. So you can also build your models different uh, and then also you can train your models, you can train it and you can change many hyperparameters. And then you can visualize your validation accuracy as well as losses, and then just check your prediction. So that's what pretty much what we've done. And this is just a step like in many, many uh, models that you build, you uh, will go through some of these steps. So this is just to show you that it can be done and uh, it's easy with a lot of practice. You need to do a lot of practice and then save your models of course you need to save your models and so on so thank you for today and uh, i want you to try more and more examples so that uh, you become competent in doing things so thank you so much and have a good day